Hi, it's Bubba. Welcome back to my channel. We're doing more uh, One Piece reviews. We're doing the Buggy the Clown arc. So I've also heard it's called the Ormish Town arc. And like I've said before, because it takes place in a town called Ormish Town. I do not remember the names of like, there's so many like little towns and islands they go to. I just do not remember the names for any of these locations. So I'll just, I've heard of this as a Buggy the Clown arc. I usually haven't been in the mood to do these because I'm like, uh, it's going to be long or whatever. But I'm realizing through these recaps is really not because I I go on TV Tropes, which is a site I've used since I was like in middle school, and they just have recaps for like the whole arc, like a whole main summary, and I could literally just read through that and it jogs my memory. So yeah, I'm gonna not like I'm literally gonna read it word for word, but I'll like summarize shit that happens and then. Yeah, kind of like how I do my other stuff, except I don't have notes for this. It's all, like, things I remember off the top of my head. Okay, okay, so to recap with the last one, uh, the main character, his name's Luffy. He's kind of a goober. He wants to be king of the pirates, and he makes friends with this kid on a pirate ship um, named Kobe. He's kind of a crybaby, and he wants to be the mer part of the Marines, which is, like, it's, it's literally just the Navy, um, because, you know, this is a universe where there's pirates, they have to have some kind of military, so it's the Navy, it just makes sense. Um, yeah, so he sort of ended up becoming friends, and Luffy has this thing where he, like, likes helping people achieve their dreams no matter what. He's just like that. The show's very big on, like, people and their dreams and stuff. So he decides, since Kobe wants to be a Marine, he'll take Kobe to the Marine base, so they go there, they end up breaking into the marine base and stuff. There's a guy named Axe Morgan, because he has like an axe for a hand or some shit. Uh, Luffy beats him up, and Luffy also meets this swordsman named Zoro, and Zoro ends up joining Luffy's crew, ending up being like the only person that's part of his crew. Um, and so Luffy and Zoro leave at the end of that arc, um, which I think is called Romance Dawn, if I remember right. Um, and then Kobe ends up going with the Marines, and we don't see Kobe for like a while later, if I remember right. But anyway, this this arc, the Buggy the Clown arc, it starts with oh yeah, because they don't have a boat or anything. It's literally just Luffy and Zoro, and they're in a rowboat. Um, yeah, they're hungry, and then Luffy spots this bird. If I remember right, I think the bird is like a vulture or something. Yeah. Because Luffy's thing is, he's kind of like Goku, where they're both constantly hungry and hyperactive. And they will, they're like Kirby in that they'll eat literally everything you put in front of them. But they'll also eat anything, and Luffy especially really likes meat. I remember that being like a main character trait um, in both the anime and the live action version. Um, so they see this bird that's just kind of flying above the rowboat. And Luffy's like, oh, I want to eat that. And he he has this ability, because there's this whole thing with, like, devil fruits, where it gives people, if you eat one, they're super rare. They give you an ability, but they take away your ability to swim. That's pretty much it. And the fruits, depending on, like, the name of the fruit, gives different abilities. It's like JoJo stands, essentially, except you can't swim. So Luffy's is the, uh, the gum gum fruit, which means his body not only is, like, basically rubber, probably literally rubber. I haven't, I haven't gotten to a point where it's had, like, rubber effects, but basically it's, it's stretchy. That's it. He can stretch any part of his body, um, which I feel like fits him really well. It's pretty ridiculous, so he stretches his arms to try and grab the bird, um, and then the bird catches him instead, and it flies away, carrying Luffy off. So Zoro's like, shit, I gotta go find him. Um, so then, let's see. Buggy, he's a pirate. He's a clown pirate with a really big red nose, but he gets, he's, like, sensitive about the nose. Like, even if you say something around him that's vaguely similar to the word nose, he gets all pissy about it. He's actually one of my favorite characters so far, he's so goofy. I'll admit, I I liked him a bit more in the live action version. I think because with the live action version, they can let things be a little more adult, so he's a bit more, I just find him funnier there. I, like in the live action one, um, I'm gonna start, you know, I spoil shit in these. Uh, he, after he fights Luffy, which I'll talk about in this, he ends up as a head. 
and at some point he ends up with Luffy's crew and is like sort of helping them but not really and then he gets his body back and he flips them off and leaves and it was so fucking funny to me and obviously that wouldn't be in the anime um even though they do like curse and shit in the anime they say the word bastard a lot and luffy whenever he meets an arc villain he's always like i'm gonna kick your ass and i'm like that's cool you should kick their ass and then he does um yeah but buggy buggy's pretty cool i like him a lot in both versions so uh yeah zoro when he's in the boat trying to find luffy uh, he comes across some of, um, Buggy's crew, they try and take, I think they try and take the rowboat for some reason, um, oh, wait, no, 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 they got, they got stranded, right, uh, Nami, uh, she gets introduced and then, the, she, she took their boat, she tricked them and took their boat, like, she pretended that she needed help, and then she took their boat and left them stranded, um, cause she's very cheeky, that's the best way to describe her, at least in the anime, but, I mean, this is an anime review. She's a character I really like, well, I'll talk about her when she, in this plot, so then gets introduced. Um, yeah, so they try and take Zoro's rowboat, and he beats him up, um, and he finds out they're part of Buggy's crew, and that the rest of the crew is in a town called Orange Town. I think, like, the town names are pretty uncreative, but, like, whatever, there's, like, a billion island towns in this series. So then Zoro goes there, because he wants to see, maybe the bird has Luffy over there. Um, but the bird's not, was the bird there? No, the bird's sort of flying near the town or something, and it flies by Buggy's ship, and Buggy wants the bird shot down, I don't even remember why. And it, it does, and it drops Luffy, so he just ends up in the town, um, and there's a girl there, and she is in a scuff or something with some people from Buggy's crew, and she, um, she's pretty smart, honestly, in that she's very, like, adaptable to things, um, so she pretends that Luffy's her boss, and that she's part of her crew, and has Luffy, um, beat up the pirates for her, which she does a lot, even at the point where I'm at with the Alabasta arc, where she, because she can't fight, she's just, like, not as strong as everyone else, so she'll get into, like, a problem with somebody, and she'll be like, oh, Zoro, Sanji, go, like, beat up these people for me, and then she'll just leave, and that's always something I find, um, really funny, so, yeah, the girl, she's Nami, she's pretty cool, she ends up being... Well, she ends up joining Luffy's crew, but she's also the navigator, because she's, like, really good at drawing ships, which comes up more in a later arc about, like, how good exactly she is. Um, I won't, I won't spoil that yet, but she's pretty cool. She's, like I said, she's very cheeky, very sneaky, and she's a thief that's, like, obsessed with money. There's, like, a plot important reason why she's obsessed with money, um, but I find it really funny that even after that plot reason gets resolved and she has, like, really no more reason to be a thief or to collect as much money as possible, she still does anyway. Like, the, you know, the crew will get into situations and they'll go do stuff and she's like, okay, I'm gonna go off and, like, rob these people or whatever just because I can. Um, or she'll lend people money. Like, with the part I'm at, or something, she lent Zoro a bunch of money, because he doesn't have any, and then she's like, okay, but you owe me, like, a ridiculous amount of interest or something, that, of course, he'll probably never pay off, I don't know, I don't know how that'll get resolved, it's not even, like, a plot point, but, yeah, she's, she's very greedy, in, like, only really in, like, a money perspective, though, um, and I like that it just takes us a trait, um, but yeah, she's a thief, she's a navigator, She's pretty cool. I'm not used to, like, with a lot of anime having, like, female characters that actually take seriously. She almost reminds me a lot of, like, Bulma from Dragon Ball, which I like both of those characters, so that's pretty cool. Where she's, like, part of the gang, but she's sort of not as strong as everyone else, but still, like, taken seriously. Because I've seen so many anime where there's women that are just used as, like, fan service and... I'm really glad that Nami isn't in Idol Vision, that she's, like, just, you know, 
one of the bullies, in a sense. But she's, she's pretty cool. She also gets a lot of really fun outfits. I think she, because the characters will change outfits usually to match whatever, like, arc they're in, or if it's, like, a weather thing, like, the Alabaster arc that I'm still watching. Um, oh, and these, I, I should clarify right now. I'm recording this in January, but this will probably get posted in, like, February or something, so I'll probably be done with Alabasta, but that one, it takes place in a desert, so the characters, like, change clothes to blend in or to match the seasons or something, but, uh, Nami has, like, the most outfits out of everyone so far, where she'll, like, throughout an episode, maybe change outfits or something, and they always look pretty cool, um, yeah, but she's neat, uh, so she suggests to team up with Luffy, um, but then he mentions being a pirate, and she doesn't like pirates, so she instead tricks him into being tied up so she can give him to Buggy. Um, I don't remember why he's fine with this. I mean, Luffy is, Luffy is pretty stupid. When I'm watching One Piece and my brother and Luffy does something stupid, I'm always telling my brother, like, uh, yeah, Luffy... I, I mean, there are other crew members not that they're stupid but like they'll get into stupid shenanigans with luffy a lot but luffy himself has this this man has no brain cell i'll just describe him as that um he's kind of yeah he kind of is just similar to goku in that regard but just no no fucking brain cell um but yeah, uh, I don't remember why he lets himself get tied up, but she, Nami goes to give him the buggy. Um, she was getting chased in the first place because she stole a map. I think it was the map to the Grand Line. I, let me look through this. I don't remember. It might have been the map. Because in the, the map to the Grand Line, the whole thing with that, they're trying to get to the Grand, they will, yeah, they're trying to get to the Grand Line and they need the map to get there, so they gotta get that map and stuff, and in the anime, I remember, no, wait, sh shit, I'm talking about the anime, no, 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 I meant to say, in the Netflix version, they, Nami and Luffy, they steal it from the marine base in the first arc, but then in, um, I think they steal it, like, from Captain Morgan's, um, not Captain Morgan, X Morgan or whatever, uh, they steal it from his office, but then the anime, I think they end up, I th maybe this is the map, maybe this is the Grand Line map, because in this recap I'm reading it just says, oh, she stole a map from Buggy, I, I have to assume it's the Grand Line map, it can't be anything else, but that's like a really important thing, especially because she'll end up being their navigator later, um, so yeah, she gives Buggy, Luffy, or whatever, um, and what else, what else happens? Skipped over this. And he's buggy, he's mad at her for stealing the map, but then she's like, oh, I want to join your crew. And he ends up throwing a party, and, you know, Luffy's basically like a prisoner now, so they throw him in a cage. It's not even a special cage, because there are cages I found out with the arc I'm in that there's cages that have like a special gem or whatever that will prevent like devil fruit powers from being used. But no, no, this one, I mean, that's not introduced yet. So this is literally just a regular cage. I think it did sort of have bars that, I mean, Luffy probably could have just snuck through it because, you know, he's rubber and whatever, he's stretchy, but he's just, they're like having a party and then like 10 feet away, Luffy's just in this stinky ass little cage. It looks so goofy. Um, and then they fire a cannon at Luffy because they have these balls. I think they're called buggy balls or something. And they have like a clown symbol on them. I think they explode. They might do something else too. They're like cannonballs. They're like custom cannonballs. I think they're orange if I remember it right. But they're called buggy balls. Um, and they shoot one of those. And they're like, oh, Nami, you're part of our crew now. You should shoot this at the prisoner, and she can't do it, um, and then, yeah, and she tries to defend Luffy, and then Zoro shows up and saves everybody, 
but he tries to fight Buggy, uh, like, you know, he's a swordsman, so he tries to hit him with the sword and doesn't do anything because Buggy, his fruit ability, I think he's the first major character introduced as, like, a devil fruit user, I don't remember, that sounds about right. He has a chop chop fruit, which means his body can split into pieces, and it could also... He, like, he can split his body into pieces, he even can make them, like, float around and stuff, it's really goofy. Um, but then, you know, it, he can also put himself back together again as well, which is pretty cool, so you can't fight him with a sword, essentially, it doesn't, doesn't do shit. Um, so, Zoro ends up getting wounded, and then he messes with the cannon, so it fires at Buggy instead of at, uh, Nami and Luffy, and they end up... Oh yeah, Luffy's still stuck in the cage this entire time, they don't even bother, like, trying to get him out of there, they just take Luffy's cage with them. So they get more, like, into the town, because it's all happening in, like, Orange Towns, so they get somewhere in the town, um, and Nami gets the key somehow to the, the cage, because... It's weird, because even though it's, like, a lock with... Not a lock. It's a cage with bars. I can picture it in my head. Which I think it wouldn't need a key, but it has, like, a little padded lock thing or something. Um, so she has the key. It was kind of funny. If I remember it, she, like, pulls out the key, and she's like, ta-ta, I got the key. And then this dog shows up, and he just eats the key. And the part, uh, oh, it's gonna sound bad. Like, if, it's one of those things where it's like, have you seen the scene? It's like, oh yeah, that's pretty funny. Like, I, my brother and I both laughed at it, but if I describe it, it's just gonna sound like I'm making fun of animal abuse or whatever. Um, yeah, the dog eats the key, and Luffy tries to attack the dog. Like, comically attack the dog. Like, you know, like, in cartoons when they get mad and they're, like, strangling someone or whatever? It, he does that. Um, but it's, it's like, in a funny... I'm not saying, like, animal abuse is cool. I'm just, like, the, the scene itself and the, like, comedic timing of it was pretty funny. Because he's trying to get the dog... Not like he's seriously injuring the dog or anything. It's like... No, no, he's just trying to get the dog to spit out the key, um, which is funny. I wasn't expecting him to do that. Um, so the mayor of the town shows up, um, cause Zora's super injured from, like, trying to fight Buggy, so the mayor's like, oh, you can just go chill in my house, take a nap. Zora takes a lot of naps, I'm just real surprised about that. Like, there's some parts where it's like, there'll be a scene, like, later on, just, just as an example, not like a specific scene, where it's like, the crew, something happens on the ship, and Zoro misses all of it because he was taking a nap. He can sleep through literally whatever. Um, so he's kind of out of the picture for a bit, and uh, Nami and Luffy talk to the mayor, and they're like, oh, there's this dog, and you're gonna fly, the dog, this, like, one random dog that is in, like, only this episode, or not this episode, this arc, Dog's only in this arc, it's just a dog. Oh, the dog's name is Shushi, my bad. Um, the dog gets a backstory, which I find really funny. Um, and then we never see this dog again, apparently. Uh, basically, the dog's backstory... I even got sad during the dog's backstory. My brother's like, you good? And I'm like, the, the dog. He's a little dog. The dog gets a backstory. This, when I'm mentioning character backstories, I'm like, I got sad. Uh, trust me on this, I'm going to get so much sadder with, like, the human characters' backstories. Uh, like, the next, no, not the next person they get. After that, yeah. We get to the restaurant, then I'm gonna get sad. Uh, then we get to Nami stuff, I'm gonna be, like, fucking crying. Not, like, during this recording, obviously, but, like, when I'm thinking of, like, describing things again, I'm like, oh no. Um, so the dog's backstory is that... The dog's owner, Shishu's owner, um, had a pet store, and then the owner left and never came back, and the dog guards the shop, and even when everyone in the town left because Buggy's there, the dog, the dog just refuses to f not, wait, no, that's not how words work, the dog refuses to abandon the shop no matter what, essentially, which is very cool. And then we meet some of Buggy's, um, crew, and this is something my brother pointed out to me as we were watching the Netflix one, because I watched the Netflix thing first. Um, in the Netflix one, it, 
Because it's only eight episodes, so you got to condense a ton of stuff. Um, we'll get to see... You, you get the boss fight, as we'll call it, with, like, the boss of that arc. But we don't... And we'll get to see their crew members, some of them. But they'll be in the background for, like, five seconds. The Luffy's crew never gets to fight any of them. Which I was kind of fine with them. Like, this is, like, alright pacing. I didn't think they need to fight these people. And then I got to some of those fights in the anime and how, like, freaking goofy they can get and whatever. And I'm like, dang, these would have been cool fights. They probably went to work as well for some of them. Like, the one I'm about to describe um, in live action. But I'm kind of glad I watched the anime and got to see all these other characters. There's, like, a few exceptions so far, but... Like, one of Buggy's crew members is a beast tamer, because, you know, it's like a clown. It's like a circus pirate crew, so they're all, like, different, um, uh, uh, circus people. Oh, that's the other thing, too. In the Netflix one, which I kind of preferred a little bit, um, yeah. Luffy, Nami, because Nami was with them at this point, um, and Zoro, they're, like, kidnapped or something in a box, and the box is open, and they're in a circus, like a circus tent, and the whole episode takes place in a circus tent, but then in the anime, there's no circus tent or any, there's no circus at all, um, there's, oh, and all the people in the live action that are at the circus, like the audience are all people, like Buggy destroyed some town, so the people from the town are like forced to be part of his audience, they're like literally change the ground. But then the anime, there's no circus at all, they're just in Orange Town, which is not even like really an important town, it's just a town, they're there, um, all the townspeople are there, they're just hiding because of Buggy, um, and yeah, it just takes place in town. I kind of preferred the circus better. I thought it was cool and more unique and fit with the theming of everything. But anyway, um, Moji the Beast Tamer, he is a pet lion. Uh, the lion's name is Richie. We get to see Richie a bit more later. I, I didn't really care about Richie at first. He's introduced as like a, you know, he's a lion. He's scary. Then he gets kind of more silly and I'm like, oh, he's, he's kind of cool. Um, so they show up, um, they want to know where Zoro is, I don't remember why, um, and then Richie, the lion, breaks the cage, um, and it sends Luffy off flying into a building or whatever, and they think he's dead, so they go to the pet shop because they want to get Richie some food, and that's why I guess a little sad, the lion gets into a fight with this teeny ass little dog, because, you know, the dog's guarding the shop, and it fails. And the shop, the pet shop actually gets burned to the ground, which is really depressing, and um, the dog has to just sit there and stare at it. Um, so then Luffy's mad about that. He's like, this dog was defending the store, and you burned that store. I'm going to fight you guys. And he wins, of course. And all he manages to get from the store is a box, one box of dog food, so he gives it to Shushu, and Nami's just like, oh, this is a pirate who isn't super selfish, because all the pirates she knows, and we'll get introduced to them later, uh, they're really selfish and stuff, um, so this, this surprises Nami, um, and this also makes the mayor want to go fight Buggy, um, but the mayor, the mayor doesn't have any abilities, the mayor can't really fight anyone, he's like some old guy, so Luffy, <laughs> it was kind of funny, Luffy actually just knocks him unconscious, um, just to get the mayor to not get in the way, because the mayor, like, would just get in the way if he went with everyone, so Luffy literally just knocks him unconscious, um, which was, like, kind of mean, but it's also, like, there was going to be no other way of stopping this man. He would have, like, died, so Luffy did him a favor there. So they go off to go confront Buggy, and then there's Kabaji, who's also part of uh, Buggy's crew, who... It doesn't say in this? I think he's the unicycle guy. My, before he was introduced, 
my brother referred to like, oh yeah, there's a guy who rides a unicycle, the unicycle guy, and I'm like, what? Like, you see him, I think a little bit in the live action one, he like throws knives at Zoro or something, but I'm pretty sure he's the unicycle guy, he, he rides a unicycle, that's about it. Um, uh, and he fights Zoro, um, and then Zoro goes to take a nap, um, and then Luffy goes to fight Buggy. I don't even really remember that fight that much. Um, and then Nami doesn't fight anyone. She's just like, oh, I know this guy has a lot of treasure. I'm going to go steal it. So, well, you know, because everyone's getting in the fight. She literally just sneaks off to go find some, some treasure. Um, uh, what else? And then Buggy... Uh, he makes fun of Shanks a little bit, which pisses off Luffy, and then he ends up stabbing Luffy's hat, which pisses off Luffy even more. Um, and then he, Buggy sees that Nami's trying to take his treasure, and he, you know, he does the thing where he splits himself into pieces or whatever. Uh, oh, okay, I didn't remember it went like that. I'm still reading the recap. It just says Luffy kicks him and is now defenseless grown. And when Buggy tries to reform his body, most of his pieces, oh yeah, he gets his, you know, because his body's floating around in pieces and Nami ties them up. Um, in the anime, no, this is the anime. In the Netflix one, uh, when they're in the circus, Nami locks up all his pieces into these different boxes, but in this she literally just ties them up with some rope or whatever. And Buggy, actually I'm getting a Netflix, no. I'm getting a Discord, why did I say Netflix? I'm getting a Discord message really quick, let me pause to check that, and then I got a funny thing to say about them tying up Buggy. Oh, that's sweet. Sorry, I was looking at Discord, I gave my friends um, some paintings, and they told me that they're prepping uh, canvases, the paintings I gave to hang up, and that they were like, oh, I'm already showing off your, your art to my family, and that made me really happy to hear. Um, anyway, okay, yeah, we're talking about this, uh, oh yeah, I was talking about Buggy getting his limbs, um, away from his body. So, in the anime, um, I don't remember if it gets mentioned in the next arc, but I'll just talk about it. Any, actually, let me check. No, wait, that's a village. Uh, okay, okay, so... Buggy, when well, Nami ties up his limbs, all Buggy is left with, and it's like, he's essentially like a Mr. Potato Head at that point, shape-wise. He's literally just a head, hands, and feet. No legs, no arms. He's like a Kirby character, essentially. It looks so freaking goofy, and it gets even better because, and I'm saying this now because I don't, it's probably not in the recap, but... Buggy, they send him off flying in this form, like like they do in anime, like with Team Rocket, where they get blasted off and they end up somewhere else. They do, Luffy does that to Buggy, so Buggy is stuck in this form where he doesn't have access to his limbs. He's literally just a head with hands and feet, and we get like two um, spin-off episodes, like way later, not way later, but like, uh, like an arc later or some shit where it's, it's literally even called, like, Little Buggy's Big Adventure or something, and it's these two, I can't even call them filler, One Piece, it's like the closest to filler so far, but, like, it has plot important stuff, so there really is no, so far, like, filler episodes I've seen with One Piece, but it's basically Buggy in the little tiny form, and he ends up on an island that the main characters were already at, and he meets the guy that lives there, and they end up becoming buddies, um, and then he ends up, he builds a little freaking dinky boat, not even a rowboat, like, worse, um, and he go, cause he, even though he's in this teeny little form, he can still use, like, the chop-chop ability of, like, spreading his hands around and shit, he can still do stuff, he's just tiny and worse, um, so he leaves the island, he goes somewhere else, he ends up 
There was a pirate I mentioned at the beginning, her name's Alvita, um, and he ends up finding her... Oh wait, no, no, I think that's later. Shit, uh... Man, I don't remember where he goes in the episode, but he ends up... Uh, Luffy's crew helps him getting his body back and stuff. Um, there's also a point where Buggy turns himself into a car. I really wanted to talk about that, and I don't remember when that is. But there's a part where Buggy... Yeah, I think it's when he's with Alvita or something. Buggy turns himself into a fucking car um, that gets launched off a ramp. Because um, Alvita's ability is is like she makes things slippery or something or like she's slippery so she makes this ramp that's like really slippery or something and buggy turns into a car and um my brother and i even called it the buggy mobile because buggy just becomes a fucking car and rides on this ramp and i looked so hard after that whatever episode that was not part of this arc by the way i think and I'm like, please tell me there's like a freaking Mario Kart mod of Buggy Car. Um, I'm very disappointed. I need that to be a thing in a driving game. Um, there is Chopper in Mario Kart 8 as mods though. And I'm not going to mod my Switch, but I I got to see gameplay of that at some point. Chopper's adorable. Okay, anyway, I, w I just wanted an excuse to talk about the buggy car and the buggy spinoff episode. I can't get into the details of that that little filler episode, but, like, I just, I got to, I had to mention, you know, because it starts off here of, like, buggy, he gets blasted off, he's in this teeny form. I'm surprised the recap didn't even mention that. But, yeah, he doesn't have his limbs at this point, and he gets sent off flying, so if you were wondering, that's what happens to him, but it's... We don't see any of that in this, um, arc. So yeah, Buggy's dealt with, and then Nami is like, I'm not gonna join your crew, but I'll travel with you for a bit, um, to achieve my goal. I mean, her, her dream is, like, you know, she's a navigator, she wants to make maps of everywhere in the world, but she also has another purpose of sorts, um, but we'll find out about that later. So then they go to find Zoro, um, and the townspeople, because the townspeople during the fight with Buggy or something, they, we see them, they're not even in the town, they, they ran away somewhere, and they're like, you know what, we, we should go defend our town from Buggy, we'll just fight him ourselves, so they get there, and then by the time they get there, it's like, Luffy has already beaten Buggy. Buggy's just gone at this point. Um, so the only people there are like Luffy, his friends, and the mayor. And the townspeople just see that the mayor is knocked unconscious. And of course they assume Luffy did it. And Luffy in his big fucking mouth is just like, Oh yeah, we're pirates. And that we're the ones that knocked out the mayor. But they don't say why they knocked out the mayor. So the townsfolk get pissed and literally chase them off the town. Because um, that's Luffy's thing too. He... He wants, you know, he wants to be king of the pirates so bad that he will not hesitate telling people that he's a pirate. Um, and even he ends up getting a wanted poster later, and he's like so freaking happy about it. Like it makes sense in his mind, but like you know, most people, there's a ton of pirates in this series, of course, but like the normies, you know, they don't like pirates, so. Luffy will, like, very happily tell people, like, yeah, we're pirates, and it usually makes things worse, like, 90% of the time. So they get literally chased off the town. They never go back, um, at least from the point that I'm at. Um, but then the dog helps them. The dog, like, the, like, the townsfolk, they have, like, torches and pitchforks or whatever, and they're trying to chase Luffy and his friends out of there, and the dog just shows up and starts barking at them and they're like shoo shoo get get out of the way get out of here but it lets them escape so they go back to the rope um and then the mayor shows up um and thanks them and then luffy tells nami and zoro like oh yeah buggy's treasure like the treasure that nami is trying to steal because so i think nami only ends up getting like half of the treasure um, the other half was, like, in the town, and Luffy left it there, and he's like, oh, I want the citizens to build, rebuild their town, because, like, Buggy ended up destroying most of the town, and Nami gets pissed about this, of course, 
And it's interesting because, you know, if you don't know anything about her and her backstory, which will get revealed later, you think, oh, that's kind of funny. You know, she's getting mad about the money. She's, cause you think like, yeah, she's a thief. She's very greedy. She likes money or whatever. Um, so she'd be mad about that or whatever. And then you find out her backstory and it's just like, oh, she really needed that money. Um, so yeah, so now she's part of their crew, but you know, she won't admit that she, they I, I mean, not really a crew member. She basically is, but like, she doesn't like officially join until they deal with her stuff. So yeah, then they leave on the rowboat. They're not trying to get, I mean, I think they do have the grand line map at this point, but they wanted to get more crew members. So that's actually the end of that arc. The next one, Syrup Village, I remember this one. It was, I felt it was better in the, in the Netflix one. But anyway, yeah, that's, that's the Buggy the Clown, I guess you could call it, also the Orange Town arc. It was okay, I liked it better um, than Romance Dawn. I liked that they like, because we do see Nami, I think a little bit, in um the first arc but she's because she's on a cruise ship with some people um that ends up getting attacked but we don't like really get introduced to her as a character um until this arc so she was really cool and of course i already talked about buggy buggy's great um like in terms of villains so far buggy's probably my favorite um <laughs> and i heard from my brother we get to see more of him later he ends up being important in like some i don't even know what arc but so that's something i have to look forward to um yeah yeah so that's pretty much about it so i liked this one it was cool then the next arc i don't really like it as much and i'll explain about that next time all right see you next time bye bye